Today we are painting a Catwoman. Unfortunately, no, it's not Julie Newmar, but we do have this pretty neat looking Egyptian themed cat person priestess. Let's go with that, shall we? And we're gonna work on painting her furry skin and also painting with a limited palette. There's a couple different ways we could handle her fur and we could do it with a fur texture. However, I already showed you how to do that in the video on painting horses and ponies. So we're gonna do something a little different here. Instead, we are gonna go for some spots. Uh, but to begin with, we gotta paint down our base coats and our main colors are gonna be brown here, working our way up a little bit towards the orange range. And we have a fairly simple, pretty much trifecta of colors here. We start off with the charred brown and then we mix in parasite brown. It's a 50-50 mix. And then we go to 100% parasite brown for the next layer. And then for the layer after that, 50% parasite brown and 50% scrofulous brown and so on and so forth. As always, all of our paint is being applied with the layering method, which means very thin translucent layers slowly built up so we don't leave any of those ugly little brush strokes on the miniature. As always, notice how as we apply each successive highlight layer, it starts being concentrated more and more on smaller areas of the miniature as we try to define the muscle areas of the miniature, any areas that we want more highlight. So working our way towards the center of the bicep, uh, highlighting the hips, the nose, the cheeks, working our way towards those smaller areas. After applying that, I decided I wanted just a little bit more highlight, so we mix in some elf skin tone to our scruffulous brown, and we just hit the edges of the miniatures. A few of the muscles that I want a little bit more of a highlight, and also we pick out the knuckles on the fingers, and the nose, cheeks, toes, areas like that. So we're gonna go for a two-tone skin tone here, and we're gonna make some patches of off-white on her belly and also her paws, I guess. And we are layering on buff. The application here is just the same as our layering method. We have very thin translucent layers of buff. We apply one over the other. The difference here is we're not applying it as a highlight. We're applying it as a color change between one area of the miniature to another. One of the benefits of layering is that you can transition between two colors and not necessarily mix them together. This is really good when you want to uh, move from one color to another without uh, mixing them. Let's say for example you wanted to go from a blue area on a miniature to yellow. You obviously can't just mix those colors 50 and 50 because then you're going to get green. But you can put down blue, let it dry, and then layer yellow on top of it. And then that way you can get your transition. Time to add her spots. And all they are is little droplets of Leho Game Color charred brown. And this is one of the times where we have to make adjustments for scale. If we did these spots in the proper scale, if we took a large cat, spotted cat, and just shrunk it down, well, the spots would be 
microscopic and you put thousands of tiny little dots on them but uh, visually that really doesn't work too well because it's just going to be a mess so we have to increase the size of the dots to increase their impact and just your ability to see them on the miniature and to make the spots a little bit more visually interesting on the larger ones adding in a little drop of Vallejo game color beastie brown Moving on to the clothing, and this is where the limited palette is going to come into focus. When you're choosing colors for a miniature, you have a wide variety of colors you can use. You can use whatever colors you want. Usually it's a good idea to use contrasting colors or complementary colors, but often you may put one color down and, not decide, and can't decide what the second or the third color should be. However, sometimes you can actually just use a limited palette. In this case, we are going with blue and just use that unifying color throughout the entire miniature and just use it in different shades. So to begin with, our main color is actually gonna be, you can almost call it a very cool white or a very light blue, it's up to you, but we're just using sky blue with highlights of white mixed in and I'm just taking it to the point where I'm happy with it. So we could stop like right here if we want a darker blue. I kept applying more white until I got to the point where I was happy with the miniature. Our main secondary color is going to be Andrea blue, so a bit more of a medium blue, much darker than the sky blue that we used on the rest of the miniature. And just for full disclosure, the darker blue that you're seeing, I put that down first uh, and decided that it was a bit too dark for what I wanted. However, I decided to leave it in the recesses, so even though we're covering it up, it still acts as a shade layer, so it works.
Next, we are going to paint the gold, and there's quite a lot of it on this miniature. So much so that you could possibly call it the secondary main color. However, I tend to view uh, both browns and metallics as neutral colors on a miniature, so they really don't usually affect whatever other colors you're going to use. So the golds here we could match with purple or green or red, it really doesn't matter because it's fairly neutral. Metallics tend to be very transparent because uh, they are made up of solid bits that give them their metallic sheen. So we need to put a undercoat. In this case, we're adding some charred browns who are glorious gold. You can mix it together for the first coat, or you can just go for a straight non-metallic brown color. Optionally, you can mix in different shades of brown or start with different shades of brown before applying your gold, and that will tint the gold in a slightly, you know, a different direction depending on what you want. So we could, for example, go for a red brown, and that would give us a little bit of a slight red tone to our gold. Our gold needs a little bit of shade, so we're using brown ink for that. We could apply it as a wash, however, there's no real deep recesses in this gold for the wash to settle in. So instead, we are layering it on on most areas. Again, it's kind of just like the layering we did on the rest of the miniature, just adding a couple coats, about two or three, in each area where we want a little bit more shade. Because the gold is such a large portion of this miniature, I decided to spice it up a little bit and we're adding a very thin glaze of yellow ink just to make it a little bit more brighter, add a little bit more color to it. Uh, a glaze is kind of like a wash, but it's much, much thinner. Also, you put it on in a nice smooth, even layer. You don't let it pool in the recesses and it adds a tint to whatever you're painting it on. I decided to add just a little bit of trim work to her clothing, uh, going with English uniform and filthy brown for that. Those colors are very similar to the gold, so it takes that gold color and transfers it onto the blue area without actually using a metallic gold on those areas.
for a few of the small little bits and bobs, I decided to work in some turquoise. Again, we are still working with a blue palette here. It's just blue with a little bit of green added to it. And for her crystal ball, we are going to let the paint kind of just go where it wants to. Putting down a layer of turquoise, wet turquoise, over a previously dry layer. And we're just going to add some very wet white and black paint to it. And just kind of let it swirl around and blend together on its own. So we get a nice swirly pattern on our crystal ball. And there is our finished Cat Priestess. So what we have here is a miniature with a very limited palette. Basically all we used were blues and browns on this miniature. The blues we used in different shades. We have a kind of a medium blue and a very light blue for the clothing areas. And then the browns we have gold and also the brown orange color for the skin. So hopefully you realize now that you don't always have to use very bright contrasting or use a lot of colors on a miniature. You can have a very limited palette and still come up with something fairly interesting just by using different shades of those one or two colors. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.